We're switching our discussion back to baseball now, and I'm joined by Chris McBride, the host, the creator of Dear Mr. Fantasy, the podcast that you can hear right here on Fantasy Sports Network, as well as you can download it from iTunes. And you've got a very interesting story, and I'd like to get some background on how you created this podcast, and also maybe some tips for people that are interested in breaking into a podcast themselves. Absolutely. The first thing that I could say, Laura, first of all, thanks a lot for having me on. Oh, I do appreciate it. Uh, really, really like what you're doing here on the Fantasy Sports Network. Um, the advice I'd give to anybody is make sure that they make sure you're passionate about it if you're going to do it. Because uh, that's the thing is, is a lot of people start up the podcast. You can go into iTunes and you're going to see it's just littered with a lot of podcasts that are there with two or three episodes and people have abandoned them. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're really, really passionate about it. It's something that you want to do because it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. Second thing I'd say is, you know what, start up a blog. You know, if you want to get started, start up a blog first, start writing, get your, get your opinions out there, get a little bit of an audience, and then that's when you decide to take it into the podcasting, uh, you know, realm. Then you're obviously at that point going to have a chance to be, uh, you're going to either be independent or you're going to affiliate yourself with somebody. Mm -hmm. Me, I've chosen to be independent. So we just, we do our show. It's, it's the Dear Mr. Fantasy podcast. That's what it is. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll affiliate themselves with a website or something like that, which is a good idea too. Helps you get, get a bigger audience and tap into what they've got. But it also, you know, you could lose a little bit of creativity. So, I mean, that's a decision you're going to have to make. The other thing too, I'd say, is make sure that you know your audience and that the podcast is about your audience. Mm -hmm. So instead of just you talking directly, it's a conversation you're having with your audience. Yeah. On our show, we've got a segment called I'm Calling You Out. And we let, we let our... We, we we'll let, look into that ourselves. Yeah. So. <laughs> we, we let people that listen call out either myself or the fantasy doctor, who is you know, my co-host, yeah. and they can call us out on anything that we've ever said. And Perfect. we'll stand up to that. And in addition to that, um, we'll do things like we'll let them have... We'll do pick -ems for players, and we also have feedback on the show. So that's really what it's all about. And then the last thing I'd say is make sure you market the show. Mm -hmm. I probably spend five to ten times more time outside of doing the show than I do actually recording it. Because you got to get out, market it, network with other people. So it's a lot of work. If you're not prepared to put in all that work and understand your audience, maybe podcasting isn't for you. Right. And it is fun. We, we make it look, we hope we make it look easy. But yeah, there's a lot of work involved. But at the end of the day, you go to work, you get to talk sports all day, right? I wouldn't do it if it wasn't as much fun as it is. Right. Well, let's get into yeah. the sports discussion yep. here. And earlier on our show, we were talking all about top tier pitchers. It seems like all week we've been talking about the pitchers that are injured. News coming out, Chris Medlin, Brandon Beachy both have appointments with Dr. James Andrews next week, which is not good news there. So let's talk about some pitchers we hope to actually see on the mound and mm -hmm. those top tier pitchers. Outside of Clayton Kershaw, which we've decided is, yes, the consensus number one Absolutely. pitcher, um, who are some other names that are really standing out to you? Well, you know, I guess the, you make a good point. So Clayton Kershaw is the number one guy. The throwaway, he's, on, yeah. he's on everybody's lips, yeah. right? And then right after that, people are saying, well, it's you Darvish or it's Wayne Wright. But you know what? I'm a little bit more concerned with a couple guys that are just outside of maybe the top five or in the top ten yeah. that I think are going to be right there. One of them is Madison Bumgarner. Mm -hmm. For me, as far as left-handers go, I think you got Kershaw's number one. I think Bumgarner's right behind him. He's got that funky delivery a lot of people for a long time thought he was going to be an injury case just waiting to happen. Hasn't happened so far. Team's been a little bit cautious with his innings. I think this year it's going to be around 220 the innings. He's going to finally get over 200 uh, Ks, I think, this, this time around. Uh, you know, he's got an array of pitches. He's got you know, basically a two-pitch guy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got like, oh, that mid-90s uh, um, uh, two-seam fastball. Mm -hmm. But he's also got one of the best, uh, one of the best sliders yeah. in the game. So I think Bat Madison Bumgarner is a guy you want to keep on. Another one I'd suggest is, is Felix Hernandez. Yeah. It's a guy people overlook him because he plays in Seattle. He doesn't get the wins. He's consistent. He's had 190 innings pitched for eight consecutive seasons. So in terms of consistency, he's your guy. Yeah. We did talk a little bit about Felix Hernandez earlier as well, so it's interesting to get your take on it. Mm -hmm. Now maybe some other sleepers, maybe not the big names, but the names that people aren't really paying particular attention to, but definitely should be. Well, you actually, you make a good point when you mention about uh, Medlin and mm -hmm. Beachy, uh, mm -hmm. both having problems. When you look at Atlanta, not only those two guys, uh, but you're also looking at Miners had a few issues with his shoulder, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I, a guy I would throw out there as a sleeper is Alex Wood. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, he's another guy with a funky delivery and stuff. And a lot of people thought because of his delivery, you know, he might be a better guy that's better off in the bullpen. But he's going to have a real, real opportunity to shine this year. So in terms of being a sleeper, uh, I definitely like Alex Wood. Another guy I'd mention is uh, in Milwaukee yeah. is Marco Estrada. Right. So in the second half of 2012, you know, he sort of came into his own. They put him in the rotation. He did really well. I had him as a sleeper last year. If, I think a lot of people are just going to look at his numbers from last year and say, ah, oh, numbers weren't great. But you got to think, the first half of the season, he was hurt. You know, he was hit a hamstring injury. It wasn't until they finally put him on the DL. He got himself right. He came back. In his last nine starts, he was pretty much an elite pitcher. Mm -hmm. So that's a guy I think. I know the problem is he gives up a lot of home runs, but this is a guy 
that he throws strikes yeah. and he does pitch up in the zone. So he's going to get hit. He doesn't have the most overpowering stuff, but he's going to get his strikeouts. And unfortunately, when he does give up hits, you know, a lot of them are going to leave the park, right, you know, yeah. which is obviously a real problem, yeah. especially in Miller Park. But for the most part, I think that's a guy that you definitely want to target as a sleeper. Right. Okay. Well, we only have a couple minutes left in our segment here, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. it's been great so far. Yep. So we want to touch on the outfielders a little bit yep, because sure. we spent uh, the last week or so talking about the infielder position. So going to the outfield, obviously, very deep position there with yep. a lot of big names as well. You've got mm -hmm. some guy named Mike Trout. I think he's pretty good. Pretty yeah. right. So yeah. uh, similarly with the pitchers, maybe putting aside the big names there, who is from other top well, names you know, like Shaquille. Well, that's a great question. And one guy who's just kind of outside maybe the top five or ten again um, is uh, is Bryce Harper. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy I've liked for a little while. Now you see him coming into camp, he's all buff, you know, of course people are, why is he so buff? You know what? He's nursing, you know, some knee problems. So when he was in the off season, when he was working on those knee issues, he concentrated on working on his upper body. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why he's, you know, big and buff. But this is a guy that, you know, two years ago we were putting, we were saying, who is going to be the best outfielder in baseball, Harper or Trout? Right. Now he goes through an injury plagued season. He's out of the equation. He's a guy I think you want to watch. His ADP is about 25 right now. This is the last time you're going to get him that low. Interesting there. So I know, yeah, you're, you've definitely got some love for him, and I hope you get him in your draft. We were talking off camera mm -hmm. that, that you're keying on him, whether it's sixth overall, whether it's tenth, sometimes you got to pick up the player. Yeah, don't give away my secrets. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll have to edit that part out. Well, we've come to the end of our show. Really yeah. appreciate it. Lots of luck with the podcast. As I said, you can download that off of iTunes. You can also listen to it here on Fantasy Sports Network. Dear Mr. Fantasy, lots of luck with that. Lots of luck with your draft. I hope I didn't spill all the secrets there. <laughs> And that's it for our show today. I also want to thank Rob Silver for coming in, and of course, Corey Erdman and Pat Mayo for talking, talking all about pitchers with me today. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again on Monday.